Good morning, my name is Bethany Kelsch. I am a real estate attorney at Stoll Reeves. Thank you for joining me this morning at SEBA's Commercial Lease Agreements class. I'm here today to walk you through the various leasing forms and explain how to complete them and also explain, more importantly, why are you, you are completing them that way in a commercial real estate transaction. This last year, some of you may know that SIBA went through pretty significant revisions to the leasing forms, many, many of which we're going to talk about today. Uh, but I want to talk about why we went through those revisions and why SIBA put so much effort into publishing leasing forms to begin with. Um, there is a, the, the role of a broker and, and the role of a lawyer in a transaction. And SIBA's efforts is to keep both parties, including the client, in everybody's respective lanes when it comes to, to moving through a negotiation. So what SIBA does is they put together a legally compliant form that is vetted by attorneys for your use as a broker so you can be as creative and as flexible and successful in coming to deal terms for, for your client. We revise the forms along that same line. We want to make them more user friendly for you as the broker and as the negotiator and as the advocate for your client. When SIBA and I approached the revisions to the leasing forms last year, we had uh, three significant goals in mind, which was to first bridge the gap between the way that the lease terms read and the way that an asset is actually operated. In doing so, the second goal is to is to harmonize the uh, expectations of the parties from letter of intent stage through lease negotiations during the actual occupancy or during the actual term of the tenancy and through expiration or renewal. And then ultimately, overall, the goal would be to reduce overall conflict and confusion throughout the transaction and throughout the tenancy. And what we mean by that is uh, the tenant moves in and their, the nozzle on their sink breaks. You want to be able to go to your lease as a, as a how-to guide or a go-to guide as who's responsible for that, how does it get fixed, when is it supposed to be fixed, how long is that supposed to take, and who's responsible for the cost. The more disconnect there is between the way that an asset's actually treated or the way the relationship actually functions and the way the lease terms read, it's going to wreak discord in the relationship. These are long-term relationships, so what we wanted to do was harmonize those issues and make sure that we have the most successful tendencies for the long term.